Hey guys, welcome to the Black Geek Cool Podcast. I'm your host, Gershon. Um, yes, I've been gone for like three weeks. I was trying to be more consistent with this. I plan on being more consistent with this podcast, putting it out every Tuesday, hopefully. So to, today is Tuesday the 7th. Hopefully I put it out when I'm supposed to. But yes, I'm, I apologize for that. I'm trying to get more consistent with these, like I've said before. So this will be out every Tuesday from now on. If I got my stuff together, but thank you guys for listening once more. And like before, this is a podcast about TV, comic book, movie, and anime news within the last week or so. This time we're gonna do like three weeks. I'm gonna miss some stuff, um, most likely. So I don't want the show to be too long. Trying to hit that thirty minute sweet spot. That seems a good spot for people. So let's get into it. Or if I miss something. Um, hit me up on Twitter or hit me up in the comments and I'll try to get to it next week. If something you want me to talk about that I didn't talk about that you were really interested in and I just forgot. So just hit me up on my Twitter at Blackie Cool or hit me up here on Facebook. I mean on YouTube or on Facebook too at Blackie Cool. So, but let's get into it guys. So first up, we're going to talk about news of TV and streaming. I think I'm going to combine these two. Because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, first up, we got the, uh, what is it? I forgot the name of it. It's the Elseworlds story CW's been doing with the Flash, Arrow, and a lot of their characters on CW on their universal kind of shows. And they've added uh, Batwoman on there. And it's doing really good. It's getting pretty, really good reviews. I haven't seen it myself. I know I talked about it last time, and I still haven't got around to seeing the episode. I think they're all done now, so maybe I'll just do it in one straight shot and watch all of them. But it got really great reviews. People seem to really dig it. Had a lot of Easter eggs that people wanted to talk about. And from that, it looks like they're going to develop a Batwoman solo show, which would, I think, I forget her name. Um, the lady that's playing Batwoman, they said she did pretty good. Oh, I'm blanking on her name right now. I pro- it, it's like Amber. It's not Amber Rose. That's Kanye's old. Day. Uh, <laughs> I'm, hit me in the comments. Let me know her name. I'm going to Google it after this is over and remember what it is. So that's going to suck. But yeah, they said she did pretty good. And they're looking at making her, giving her a TV show as Batwoman. And they're starting to develop it. So hopefully that comes about. It's cool to, it's cool to see one show do a whole character build with a whole bunch of characters and it has a show spin off of that and hopefully that show could be successful because dc they live in tv shows right now they're still trying to get their movies up but their tv shows are pretty good except for the stuff on the dc app they're still worrying about that um yeah but that's good news for what's her name who plays batwoman might get a consistent gig that's always good make that good money but um other tv news the golden globes have happened and unfortunately black panther didn't win anything oh it sucks like i wish they'd have won something come on it's a great movie but no they did not win um at the golden globes they got beat out by um lady gaga for original score which Lady Gaga did her thing. She's a good musician. She's all about music. She does her stuff. So I can't be too mad about that. But I would have loved to see Black Panther win something. That would have been cool. But yeah, Black Panther didn't win. But what did win a Golden Globe was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse for Best Animated Movie. So excited for this movie. It's such a good movie. I'm so excited it won. Um, Kudos to Sony to just taking a chance and doing something different with Spider-Man and being successful at it. That it was just awesome. Awesome that they were so successful at it. And it's such a good movie, such a good story, such a good Spider-Man movie on top of being a good comic book movie on top of being a great animated movie. There's so many wins for this. I wish people would go see more so they get them box offices up because box office is kind of low, but it's still a really good movie. People go see it. Go see Spider-Man. It's a really good movie. You need to check it out. Um, a little bit of streaming news. Cyborg's picture for Doom Patrol came out. And people were like, oh, it looks okay. I think it looks terrible. <laughs> it looks 
looks like a bad Halloween costume. I'm sorry. I haven't finished Titans. I'm on like episode three still. But I haven't got to the point when I, the Doom Patrol comes into Titans. I know they come into Titans for an episode. And Doom Patrol is already scheduled to have their own show, which is pretty cool. But that that cyborg looks terrible. He looks he's so small <laughs> compared to the other people on Doom Patrol. He's really small. I'm I'm like I mean for the actor, kudos, you got a job. It's all about getting work. I'm not going to put you down for getting work. It's just that costume they gave you, bro. It looks bad. It just, I, I just don't see it. Some people say it's okay for TV. I'm sorry. It doesn't even seem okay for TV. Like, and this is not TV anymore. This is streaming. This is DC. This is something you're paying a monthly fee for. It's not a package deal with other channels and stuff. This is just DC stuff. They should have a bigger budget. They should have more money to throw at this. And it just looks weird and not. It doesn't look cool to me. It looks like somebody cut half a mask off and glued it to the side of his face. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hit me in the comments if you think it looks good. I, I'm just not feeling it. Maybe it's just me. But it looks funny to me. I can't help it. But Young Justice Outsiders premiered. And so far people are liking it. I think it's got like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I have been hearing some people like it feels like old stuff and it doesn't feel like they're moving forward. Um, it feels like a lot of, hey, look at this character. Hey, look at this character. Oh, we got this character now. And not a lot of plot and uh, story being pushed forward, which sucks. Hopefully I'll get to watch the first episode and I'll do a review on that so you guys can see that. But I was really excited about Outsiders and to hear that it might be just a, hey, we got this character kind of show now sucks especially when it's a show that came back from cancellation um so many people into it to push for it to come back to get a third season to see that that's what they're doing with it feels like it's just wasted now like i don't know that's how it feels to me even though i, I can't really speak on it too much because i haven't seen the first episode but from fans and people that have been one of this show they don't seem too excited about it for some reason still got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, so clearly those fans are voting on that, but so far I'm not hearing the greatest of things, so hopefully I get to check it out soon and see for myself, and I get you get, let you guys know how I feel about the show and give you my opinions on the show, but also season four of My Hero Academia is coming in October or November, I think it might be October, and I'm so excited for this, I love Hero Academia, it's a great show. Um, it's a great anime. It's a it, it tells a story, and most animes do a lot of filler. Hero Academia does very little filler, very little filler, and it keeps the story progressing. Even though you kind of already know where the story is supposed to go with him being the best hero in the world, that that journey of getting him there is amazing, and the characters are great. They do char great character development on it. Um, you really get the feel for the characters. You really get to sit with the characters and get to know them as people. And that's really cool. It's supposed to be coming back for season four um, in October 2019. So I'm really excited for that. Um, also, hit me in the comments. Let me know if there's some animes you think I should be checking out. Knowing that I love um, My Hero Academia, Tokyo Ghoul. I used to like Dragon Ball Z. I'm not really a fan of Dragon Ball Super right now. I still love Goku and all those guys, but Super just doesn't feel like the show for me right now. I got to watch Seven Deadly Sins. I'm going to check that out soon. Um, season 2, I got to check that out soon. But while we're talking about it, one of my other an favorite animes, One Punch Man, which is supposed to be having a second season in 2019. Unfortunately, they haven't given us like a month or a date that's going to come out because it was supposed to come out last year. Still didn't come out. It was a great first season. It's a great show. It's a little different than what you would consider a shonen anime. It's more of a parody of a shonen anime. But then within that, it's still its own kind of thing. So if you like that, check it out. Season one is out there on Netflix and Hulu, I believe, dubbed and subbed. I'm a dub fan. I I don't want to read when I'm watching TV. It's just me. But I will read if I have to because I did with 
uh, Tokyo. No, I did with Attack on Titan the first season. I read the whole thing. It was a lot of pausing, but I read it. <laughs> That's a good show, too. I don't know. Uh, hit me in the comments. I haven't seen anything about season four if that's coming out, because I love the way they did season three. Season one was good halfway through, then it got weird. But I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. So let's try to get focused and get back to One Punch Man coming out in 2019. Let me know if you're excited for that. If you like the show, if you dislike the show, if you're mad the show hasn't come out yet. Let me know if you read the manga. If you read the manga, don't spoil stuff for people that haven't read the manga or even watched season one. Keep it light. Just Tell me you enjoyed the manga. Maybe tell me I should check it out. So hit me in the comments. Let me know that. Also on Netflix, they have Seven Deadly Sins Season 2, which I'm going to watch. I just finished Castlevania Season 2. It was pretty good. I liked it. It, it gave you, it, they left it room so you can have a third season. They can go somewhere with it. But it's pretty cool. Dracula's still pretty cool in this. Um, It was a good show. It, it. It got a little weird here and there. It got a lot of, hey, look at us read books. I'm here for the action or, or the mythology of this. Not for you to be reading books and being in the library necessarily. But it picked up when it needed to. Um, but it's still a good show. Castlevania, good show on Netflix. But Netflix is also killing it movie-wise all of a sudden. Because they had, um, what is it, Roma? I think I'm pronouncing that right. It won a Golden Globe for Best Foreign Film, and that's a Netflix film. And Best Director was the director of Foreign. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry, um, but he won as Best Director. Both Netflix things, so that puts them on the light. That I mean, Netflix has been trying to get credit in this movie game for a minute, and they finally starting to move that stick along, which is kudos to them. They've been putting in work. I mean, they put out a lot of bad movies, but every so often they put a gem out there, and people are like, oh wait, Netflix, I didn't know you could do this. Speaking of gems, the biggest thing to hit the end of 2018 which I forgot to say at this beginning of the podcast. Um, happy holidays, happy new year, all that good stuff. Hope you had a safe holiday. Hope you had a safe new year's. Got drunk, but made it home safely. Um, but at the end of 2018, Netflix released Bird Box, which became a phenomenon. Just a meme TV show phenomenon. I'm probably not saying that word right because I can't say it, <laughs> but it just blew up. It's everywhere. There's memes all over the place. Uh, people are telling refs they <laughs> get out of that bird box. And Sandra Bullock is telling people stop sending her stupid stuff. <laughs> but it's amazing how good it's done. And apparently Netflix put out something saying that over 45 million people watched it, at least 70% of it. So they're trying to pump it up, showing you that they got movies, so you need to come check them out. And it just it just blew up. It came out of nowhere and just done really well. I've watched it. It's good. I see people comparing it to A Quiet Pace, A Quiet Place. It's not so much on the level of Quiet Place. I seen somebody else say something about it. It's like The Happening. The Happening sucked to me. That was terrible. Bird Box is better than The Happening to me, in my opinion. I'd say it's a pretty good movie. Like, if you got Netflix, you got Netflix. Go ahead and watch it. Why are you not watching it? If you don't have Netflix, you know somebody with Netflix. Go over to their house and go watch it. Or get their password. Or however how y'all do it. I'm not telling you to steal stuff. That's your decision. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Sandra Bullock does a good job. Oh, I forget his name. Dude in... He's a dude in Moonlight. He does a great job in um Bird Box. Also, Rails in Bird Box, he does an okay job. He's not there for that long, but I'm not going to spoil anything for the movie, but it's a really good movie. You should go check it out. It's really good. Um, Yeah, definitely go check it out. But Netflix is really proud of this, and they've been pumping it up. They actually had to tell people, because I saw all of a sudden there's these Bird Box challenges where people are putting on blindfolds and walking out in the middle of the street. People, what's wrong with you? Come on. I thought we got over this after this whole Tide Pod challenge thing. I thought we moved past this. We're still doing stupid stuff. I get it. You young people think you're going to live forever. You're not. You're going to die. Stop doing stuff to make that happen faster. <laughs> but Netflix put something out on their Twitter saying, hey, 
We appreciate you love Bird Box. And we appreciate all the support it's getting, the how you're making it popular. But please do not do these Bird Box challenges. You will die. <laughs> please don't do that and go watch Bird Box. <laughs> but yeah, people are doing it. So it's 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 what's happening, I guess. I don't know. Don't do that, people. You're going to die. Stop doing stuff like that. But yeah, Bird Box is a hit, they say. So they're super excited for that. Um, Netflix is supposed to be getting uh, Sabrina. The Chilling Stories of Sabrina. Zari, I think, has been renewed for a second and a third season. I believe that's correct. So clearly that's doing really good. I haven't checked it out myself. But they say it's doing really well. And they're really getting behind the show. So maybe I should go check this show out. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should. I'll probably check it out eventually. Hit me in the comments. Let me know if I should check out Sabrina or the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Is it even called that? Or is it called the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? It might be called Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Hmm. Um, A little bit of YouTube news. So I caught this the other day. Um, I was watching YouTube and Jack Black has a channel now. It's called, uh, oh my God, what is, I, I just saw this. It's like Jack, Gag, it's a gaming channel. Oh, I forget the name of it. But he has a YouTube channel that I think is already up to like 3 million subscribers. He's put out like two videos. Um, one, I think made like 1 million to 2 million views. The other one, he finally does something on. He plays a little bit of pinball. But this is, I think this is good for YouTube. Gets them a little more um, pub. Gets them a little more credibility. Even though half the world only watches YouTube now. Which is the way things are going with streaming and everything. Now TV is really getting pushed back. So unfortunately TV's got to catch up. But yeah, YouTube is letting Jack Black is putting it up front page which is great but weird but i love jack black so i'm watching it <laughs> i love jack black he's a he's funny he's hilarious in movies i haven't seen his stand-up i don't know about his stand-up might be not that great hmm i never i never realized i've never seen his stand-up yeah but yeah jack black's youtube channel check it out if you're interested see what it's about and now movie news so, first bit of movie news we have, there's rumors that DC may be getting a new Batman in 2019. I know they've already said they're going to start um, shooting Bat the solo Batman movie in November of 2019, but now we might be getting a new Batman. So, Ben Affleck might actually really be out as Batman um, there's been a lot of back and forth if he's going to do it. He already backed out of writing the Batman and backed out of directing Batman. But now he might not even be Batman, which kind of sucks. Because I like him as Batman. I like him as old Batman. Um, his Bruce Wayne still is not that great to me, but his Batman is really good. His old Bruce Wayne might be okay, but his Batman, old Batman is great. He's not going to be Batman, so hit me in the comments. Let me think, who do you think should be Batman for DC um, in their DCU-verse? I guess they, cause they, have, they still haven't given us a name for their movie universe. Um, being that, that I don't think they're going to keep continue trying to have a cohesive movie universe since they have the Joker movie, which has no connection to any of the other movies. It seems like they're going to start doing a lot of elsewhere stories. And speaking of that Joker movie with um, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. I can't say his name always. Um, there are reports that he did an excellent job as Joker. Like he crushed it. That's what the reports are saying um, so far about this movie. And... I don't even I don't know if I want a Joker standalone movie, but I will go see a Joker standalone movie. Now if it's good, that's a positive, but if it's bad, oh DC you just messing up. 
like, oh, you're messing up. You take one of your most iconic villains and mess him up. It's going to be hard for you guys to rebound, especially you guys' movies have been kind of, I don't want to say trash. You guys have been doing not so well with them. And I believe you guys can do better if you kind of stick to the source material and stop trying to be different from Marvel. Just be you. Sorry, I had to get a drink of water. Um, just be you guys. You guys are you. Got, you guys have such good characters. Batman's such a good character. Spy, <laughs> Spider Man, <laughs> Superman is such a good character. Aquaman is such a good character. We're going to talk about him a little later. Now he's such a good character. At first, he was a good character. You did No one thought Aquaman movie. Good idea. But turns out it's a great idea. <laughs> but you have the Lantern, the Lantern Corps, Wonder Woman, Hawkman. Dude, you have a lot of good characters. Just focus on bringing those characters to the screen the way they are in the comic books. And don't try to not be funny. Don't try to be dark and gritty. Just stay true to those characters. That's why Marvel does so well because they stay true to the character. They know the character enough to where they can play with it. Get people that know these characters and let them write their movies and stop worrying about if they're going to be gritty enough. Don't be the don't try to be the opposite. Just be you. That's my little DC cuz I like DC. People always say that I'm super Marvel fanboyish. And don't get me wrong, I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man's my top guy. But that next guy under Spider-Man is Batman. <laughs> so, I love DC, but they're just not doing it right now, and it's just sad to see. But that's just a ramble I just went on, so let's move on. Uh, other news, there is talks of an animated Transformers movie about Cybertron, which I'm really excited but then I'm not excited because I wanted to see a live action movie about Cybertron. Like, if you've seen Bumblebee, that first 15, 20 minutes is really good. And I want to see more of that. Um, but I guess you got to get take what they give us. Um, a, a animated Transformer Cybertron movie could be good. Should be good. Because you could do so much with animation. But I really want a live action one. Um, if what they get from this Bumblebee movie is to make a live action, they clearly got the wrong picture. I mean, an animated movie, they, it's clearly they got the wrong picture. We just want more of the robots. <laughs> like, uh, I still have to do my Bumblebee spoiler review. So spoilers if you haven't seen Bumblebee. I'm not going to spoil anything really. But yeah, we want more of the first 20 the 25 minutes of Bumblebee. We want more of that in a live action movie. That's what I would like anyway. And other news, uh, action figure of from the new Captain Marvel movie might have told the true identity of Jude Law and the character he is playing in the Captain Marvel movie. Um, it's up and down as he's playing Marvel. Are, I forgot the oh, I forgot the character's name, but it was up and down for those two characters. I guess this action figure is kind of pointed in one direction, like he's playing this character. I haven't seen the action figure because I'm trying to not spoil too much of the movie since I have to watch every trailer. Um, I'm trying to not spoil too much, so I'm gonna not look at it. If you guys want to look at it, go check it out. I'm pretty sure you could Google it. But yeah. Also, I don't even know if I should say this because it's kind of spoilery. And I only heard from somebody else that didn't realize I didn't want to listen to it. So I'm not going to tell you that. Um, uh, nah, I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, also, another news Star Wars might have a title. Star Wars, not. <laughs> Why do I say it like that? <laughs> Star Wars, Star. <laughs> oh my God, that's terrible. Star Wars 9 might have a title, and it might be Knights of Ren. So, I don't know if they might be just baiting people with that title. If they choose a title of that, thinking 
they're going to be about the Knights of Ren. Because so far, a lot of the kind of leaked footage or leaked information about what's going on, it doesn't seem to be about that. But they could be just throwing out a lot of fake information to get key people off the trail. So, But there's rumors that this is going to be the title of Star Wars 9. And I can't say Star Wars, which is weird. Also, uh, was it um, Star Girl? It's a comic book superhero. I think they cast three new characters for her show. Is it a show or is it a movie? I think it's a movie. It might be a streaming show. So that should have been in streaming news. I'm sorry about that. It just popped in my head. Something I remembered from looking up news throughout this week and the weeks past. <laughs> also, they're talking about putting Japanese Spider-Man into Spider-Verse 2. Which you were always already we were told that there's supposed to be a spinoff of just Spider Women um, in the Spider Man movie. I don't know if it's supposed to be animated or um, live action. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be animated. I think they're going to stick in that wheelhouse right now since it's doing so well. But there's also talks of doing. Well, they're they're probably going to, especially now that they want to go to Globe, they're going to do another Spider Man into the Spider Verse. And there's talks of putting the Japanese Spider Man. And if you don't know the Japanese Spider Man, I think it came out in like 1980s, close to 19, the beginning of 1990. Uh, Japan put out a Spider-Man show. No, I'm probably in the 80s. Japan put out a Spider-Man show where Spider-Man has a mech robot. So he has like, like kind of like the Power Rangers where he had his own robot to fight crime. He also had a car and he had these uh, metal wrist gauntlets. Uh, to where he shoot out spider webs. They're talking about putting him into Spider-Verse, which I think would be cool, being that they're trying to put every Spider-Man in existence in these movies. I think that'd be a cool nod to that, which I still have to do a Spider-Man um, spoiler review soon. I'm going to do it, because I love that movie. i just been watching it so much. Ah, I'll probably gonna go see it tonight, too. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but yeah, but they're talking about putting that Spider Man into the second Spider Man movie, um, into the Spider Verse Two, which we don't know if it's gonna be that long title, which is such a long title. It's such a long title. I'd need them to bring that down to her and just call it Spider Verse. Just call it Spider Verse Two. Ah, uh, but you gotta get Spider Man in there. Uh. Call it Spider Man Spider Verse Two. There you go. Don't put the into. Take that part out. <laughs> That's that's my critique for Hollywood, being that I'm making all this money. I'm not making any money. But that's my critique for Hollywood, to make the Spider-Man movie better. Even though it's already good. It's really good. Go see it. Go see Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And say the whole title. Like a pimp name slip gang. <laughs> Sorry. But in other news, Aquaman. Aquaman's director, James Wong got very upset with the Academy for not nominating Aquaman for visual best visual effects. He feels he got kind of snubbed at the Oscars, which I'm with, I'm with James Wong. Aquaman is beautiful. It is beautiful. Like, the visual effects is beautiful in Aquaman. They should definitely got a nomination for special effects. Like, wow. Yeah. That is, that I, I can see why he's upset. I can see why he's upset because it's beautiful. But he does have Aquaman almost making a billion dollars to fall back on now. Because at this point, Aquaman is like at $935 million. It is most likely going to make a billion dollars. And it's already outgrossed almost... Every other DC movie so far, I mean, in this new universe of DC movies, I think it actually got gross. I think, no, Dark Knight made a billion dollars. I think Dark Knight made a billion dollars. So it's closing in on Dark Knight. It outgrossed a lot of different um, Marvel movies, too. So this for all these guys that say I'm a DC hater, it outgrossed a lot of Marvel movies and it's doing better than them. So there you go. 
DC getting on the board with Aquaman. Hopefully they can keep James Wong because I really think he's the component that made Aquaman such a good movie. And Aquaman is a good movie. I got a spoiler review coming with that too. I'm working on it. I've been busy. Oh my God, guys, I've been busy. I got to get on top of this stuff though. Being consistent. That's my goal for 2019. Being more consistent. <laughs> but Aquaman is doing very well and I believe it's James Wong. I believe James Wong is the piece that's helping DC re um, rebound from all their bad decisions in their other movies. I think if they, I think they really should do make James Wong like a Kevin Feige for their universe. I really think they should do that to where let him have a touch of each character and kind of help that project along. Um, I don't think he needs to direct everything, but I think he should be essential in making sure that vision gets seen on the screen. Cause I think he's good at bringing that vision to life. And that, I think that consistency would help DC moving forward. This is a good step for DC to kind of rebound and get back to that mantle. They should be at like, they should be par and par with Marvel movie wise. You guys should be able to make just as much money and make just as good as movies as Marvel does. I know that's terrible English. Don't judge me on that. <laughs> but yeah, this could be a good step for DC going forward. The next movie I believe they have is Shazam, which is already an out of the box um, concept for DC within this whole new gritty reboot type situation they've been doing with their movies. This is definitely out of the box. It's uh, It looks good. I'm not going to lie. Shazam looks good. I'm excited for that movie. But I'm I'm happy that Aquaman's about to make a billion dollars. It's a good movie. It's a little long. Um, if you saw my review of Aquaman, my non-spoiler review, you know I felt it was a little long. Some things could have been taken out. But ultimately, it's still a real good movie. It's a it's a a real good story. It's visually beautiful. And Jason Momoa is good as Aquaman. I said it. Jason Momoa is Aquaman. He's perfect as Aquaman. But yeah, that's all the news I've got for you guys. Um, hit me in the comments. Let me know if something I missed that you wanted to talk about. Maybe I'll talk about it on the next podcast. I'm still debating if I'm going to get a, a co-host on this podcast. Um, hit me in the comments. Let me know if you think I need a co-host or if you're cool with just hearing my voice. Um, if I do get a call, so we might go to an hour, um, cause we'll have two people's opinions and back and forth. So that make the time go a little longer. Just a thought to keep in your mind, but thanks for listening guys. I really appreciate it. Um, all my links and contact info is in the description. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Blackie cool. Of course you can hit me up here on youtube at blacky cool hit the subscribe button um if you haven't subscribed and you want to check out some more of my videos check those out and if you like the videos the like button and hit the subscribe button one more time so you know that you hit it make sure it turns is it gray i think it's gray make sure it turns gray um as always guys appreciate you listening appreciate the support oh that's what i wanted to do too i want to start um kind of shouting out people that support the show or at least leave comments, or subscribe, uh, hit me up on Twitter, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to start doing that more often. So, Brent, thanks for watching the shows. Thanks for listening. Thanks for commenting on stuff. Bo, my friend, thanks for his support. He comments on some of my videos. I appreciate that, man. And my mom, who's always supported me and <laughs> always telling me, go, baby, do what you're going to do. She's watching the show, too. She she likes comic book movies, so we talk about it anyway. I might have her on the show one of these days. But thank you guys for support, listening, watching, subscribing, commenting. Please comment in the comments so I can read your comments and I can talk back to you. I would love to have dialogue with you guys and communicate with people that are watching my show and find out good, bad, and just talk about comic book stuff. Uh, hit me in the comments. Let me know. If anything you think I should watch, 
or check out. I'm starting to ramble on, so I'm going to end this, guys. Appreciate you guys listening, and I'll talk to you guys in my next one.